Hello everybody, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to have a lot of fun here. We're going to create a composite, a face swap composite, and we're going to do a pretty good job converting this classic girl with a pearl earring you'll see it on the internet everywhere. We're going to get this corgi, and then we're going to shade it in, and we're going to make it look like it's, yeah, like the girl with a pearl earring is a Corgi, and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of the different steps to get there. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete these two layers, get rid of it, and let's start from right here. So the first step is you go to your finder, and then you just got to go find the image that you want on top. So in this case, I'm going to drop this image of a Corgi in here, and I will drop the Corgi right here. And this is a good looking Corgi. Look at this little guy. And I like this image. It's not perfect for this, but it, of course it won't be perfect. But the reason why it's kind of good is because the Corgi sort of got the same eye level and it's kind of, you know, sideways looking towards the camera. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of just resize this one here. And actually what you can do is you can turn the opacity down to like say 50%, like I'm gonna do here. And then I'm just gonna resize it and sort of try and match up the eyes and then just go from there. So something like that looks about right, at least for now. And then presto, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll hit enter and I'll accept that. I'll turn the opacity up to 50. And now let's get cooking. All right, here we go. So make sure you're selected on the bottom layer, in this case, the girl with the pearl earring. And I'm gonna go over to the left side here in my toolbar and grab the quick selection tool. Now, sometimes the other selection tools will work quite well, but uh, this is the one I'm gonna go with for this one. I'm also going to increase the size of my brush, which you can do with the left or right square bracket, or you can just go in here and just adjust it right here like this. So I'm gonna make it, I don't know, some about 80 pixels. And then I'm just gonna left click on her face. I'm just gonna drag it out and it's gonna do a pretty good job, but you will notice that it gets a few things I don't want. In particular, I don't want her headband and I don't want this outside space. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold down the Option key on a Mac, the Alt key on a PC, and you'll see here that the selection tool turns into a negative. So I'm going to now go ahead and just sort of scroll over her face here. Uh, I don't know if I can say that in 2023, but I did it. So I'm just kind of going over here and I'm just taking away the parts that I don't want. So I'm just kind of, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to get in pretty good, pretty tight. Okay, so this is pretty good. Now you'll see here that there's a part over here that I want to select because that's obviously part of her face. And I also got, you know, half of the earring, but I'm missing this part here. So I'm going to change selection tools. I'm gonna go over here and now I'm gonna go grab the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool, if I just start using it, it will create a new selection. If you hold down the shift key, you'll see a plus sign appear and that means I'm adding to the selection. So I'm just gonna go and make sure you've got shift held down and you'll see here that I've added this little part over her eye here to the selection. I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm just gonna run it down here and right down to the white part. Oops, let's get right a little closer. And then I'll, I'll just go ahead and zip out and add that to her selection. So there we go, we've got that selection. Now before we go any further, this is a interesting thing. You resist the urge to click on the layer mask button. What we actually want to do is we wanna to go to the top layer here, which is the image that we're going to be working on. I'm going to turn it on and then on the top layer selected, click on the layer mask. Now watch, there we go. We've got the puppy dog. We've got the corgi kind of in place. Now we gotta go ahead and make a few adjustments, poke and prod it and get it looking good. So let's get on to the next step. All right, the next step is a critical step. If you don't do this, you're gonna get some weird results. In the top layer here, now that we've applied the layer mask, which we clicked on this button here, you're gonna see this look and change thing. Uh, it looks like a chain part of me in it. When you hover over, it says indicate layer mask is linked to the layer, whatever it says. You need to left click on that and un. you need to basically break that link or break the chain there so that now the, the parts are not constrained so when we adjust them so now that this we broke that link now I'm going to click on the image of the dog or the corgi and now I'm gonna hold down command on a Mac control on a PC and the letter T and I'm going to do a free transform but why this is interesting is because I can now transform it and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to transform 
um, in a fixed ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go and grab my little move tool here and I'm gonna maybe move this a little bit and then let's see, something like that. I'm kinda liking that. And then should, let's see here, let's see the underlying image again. I'm gonna look at the picture, look at the puppy. So we're kind of pretty close already. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this a little bit here and maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger because I want more of the puppy face. So there we go. We've got some puppy face in there and I don't really want his or her ears. So let's go with something like that. Now, this is not perfect, but that's okay. We're now gonna go ahead and start warping it. So I'm gonna click out here. I'm gonna click up here and let's get to warping. So let's click on this little button here. It says switch between free transform and warp modes. Okay, so click on that. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the warping. All right, so now we're gonna start doing some warping. So what we want is we want this, uh, this is his or her right eye. We want it pretty close to the edge here. We wanna bring this eye in a little bit closer and we wanna pull the mouth out a little bit. We want a little more of that mouth there. So let's just go ahead. We'll start at the edges perhaps. I'll just grab this point and you'll see here, not too much going on. It's just a little bit of an expansion. Let's grab this one, not too much. All right, let's go in a little further. Let's grab this one. This one will have a big effect. And you'll see here that I'm pulling the eyes and the mouth a little bit to the left. Not bad. Let's grab this point here. And this one allows me to sort of pull the, the mouth back. But now I'm gonna grab this one here and I'm gonna pull the eye up. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just basically nudging it into place. And I'm not trying to make it with huge warps because then it would look really funny. And then you'll see here, I'm gonna pull this one down here. And now I wanna pull this right eye or the left eye here. I wanna pull it in a little closer. And then we can always judge where we are. Let's just go ahead and turn this on or off. So I'll turn it off, on. And if we want, we can even change it down to about 50%, 40. Let's go to like 50% 50, 50 opacity so we can sort of see what we're doing through the two layers. And I know it looks kind of jumbled, but it's okay. So we want to get back to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command or Control T. That opens up our free transform. And again, I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to click on Switch to Warp Mode. And as I do that, what I'm going to do now is let's go to an advanced technique. I'm going to go up to the top left here and I'm going to split the warp vertically. So I'm going to create my own line. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then you see here, I've got my own line here that I'm putting in. So I'm putting in another warp line. And this just gives us a little bit more ability to dial it in. So I'm gonna drop it right there. And then take a look here. I'm gonna pull on that handle and see how I'm sort of pulling it down so the eyes are on top of each other. That is just because I added in my own little warp. So in here, let's go ahead and pull that. I'm gonna pull that one out a little bit in because again, I want more of the mouth. And then let's go ahead and pull, ooh, we don't wanna to do too much there. Let's pull this one in here a little bit and maybe I'll pull in the corner because I'm trying to just move this. So I'll pull this handle in, pull this one up a bit and we're getting pretty close to what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back up to 100% and we're just gonna eyeball it for the rest of the way. So here we go, let's go ahead and again, you can go crazy on this and get super accurate, but I just wanna show you the technique. So I'll just go a little bit quicker and you guys can trust me that, you know, okay, hey, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's move the lips in there. So something, something like that, let's say, that looks pretty good. It ain't perfect, but it's good. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so the next step is I'm actually gonna go ahead and double click on this mask here. And the reason why is because when I laid, when I made the original layer mask, I just created the mask, but I didn't refine it. And I wanna show you another technique here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the radius to about five pixels. And what's gonna happen is, is it just smooths these edges a little bit. I'm going to increase the smoothness to 40. And again, it's smoothing the edges so that it doesn't have that hard edgy look that um, you get in some masks. This isn't a ne necessary step, but I find it just makes it look a little bit more believable. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll shift the, I'm even gonna shift the edge in about minus 5%, and I'm gonna increase the contrast to 3%. So I'm just basically just working on these tight edges here. See how it's gotten smoother looking as opposed to jaggedy. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click on okay. And it just makes it look a little bit smoother. All right, let's crack on to the next step. 
Okay, the next step is a fun one. I'm going to click on the uh, image or the square of the corgi, and then I'm going to go up to filter, and then I'm going to go to stylize, and then I'm going to go to oil paint. We're basically going to give this pupperoo a little bit of an oil painting effect. So I'm just going to sort of scroll through here, and you'll see here that eventually, there we go, I've got a, a nice shot of the eyes here. And then depending on how much stylization you want, I can zoom in and you'll see here that this is kind of what it looks like, the, the actual paint marks. And it looks kind of stylized, similar to what we've got. So stylization of, let's go with two, cleanliness 1.4, scale one, bristle detail three, and lighting angle minus 60, shine 1.3. These are just the settings I use. These are not required settings for yours. I just want to show you what I'm going to use and you guys can season your uh, images to your taste. So I'm going to click on OK and we're going to have a very subtle image. We've got a very subtle oil painting effect applied. Now let's get into the neural filter stage. I'll show you that in the next step. All right, let's get going. Now we're going to try and match the colors of the corgi face to the painting a little better. So what we do now is making sure you're selected on the filter on the uh, image of the corgi we're going to go to filter and then we're going to go down to neur neural filters pardon me under neural filters the whole bunch but the one that we want is harmonization this allows us to uh, harmonize the color and luminosity which is the brightness uh, of the uh, image to an underlying image so we're going to take the corgi turn this on you may have to download this effect if this is your first time using it and then we're going to go to reference image and then we're just going to select the girl with the pearl earring or whatever image you're working on. When you do that, it processes and you'll see here that it sort of takes on the color of the original image here. I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 85 because I find this to be quite a good, um, quite a good filter. And then if I look at this, I think, OK, this looks pretty good, but maybe her maybe the puppy dog's face needs a little bit more yellow. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to go maybe actually add a little bit of, oh, pardon me, I'm going to add in a little bit of brightness. So I just want it to be a bit brighter. And this is just me dialing it into what I think. But again, you guys can, of course, adjust this as you see fit. When you've got something you kind of like, click on OK. And presto, the dog is starting to match the colors. It's actually looking pretty good, if I'm being honest. Now I'll show you the final steps. All right, so the final steps is we could paint in a shadow on the right side, or I guess on the dog's left side. And if we look at the original image, you'll see this shadow here on the lady's face. This is optional, but if you want to do it, turn this on. We'll turn on that layer. I'm going to click on a new fresh layer. I'm going to go over here to my brushes. I'll select a basically a soft round brush. I'll make sure that it's set to black. And then I'll just try to look here at what I, what was the original, what did it originally look like? Okay, so the shadows are right in here. So we'll just add that in on a fresh new layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just add in a bit of a shadow. Now do notice that I have the opacity set to 5% because if you have it set at 1%, you're gonna get pure black. But if you have it at a lower percentage, like let's say five, you can just add in a little bit of a shadow just to sort of match the underlying layer if you so choose. Again, this is purely optional. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more in there, a bit more in there, sure. Something like that. Now, let's go ahead and look at this. So here we go, here's the original. Then we added in some, we added in the Corgo, and then we added in a little bit of shadow. And all in all, we've got a pretty good look here. So that's how you do it inside Photoshop. Thanks for watching.